Hi everyone. Today we are joined by Dr. Sophie Bradley to discuss about the new mentoring program that is going to be launched soon at our uh, Institute of Molecular, Cellular and Systems Biology and will be available to all the early career researchers to discuss and take advice um, according to their needs. Hope you enjoy the listen. Um, I'm Emily Larson, mm-hmm. and I'm a postdoc researcher in Mike Blatt's lab okay. here um, in the institute. Maria is also a postdoc in um, in the lab, and Emily Armstrong <laughs> is um, a PhD student in Anna Ottman's lab. So we're uh, kind of all interested in science communication yeah. and um, kind of engaging with scientific conversation mm-hmm. uh, from lots of different perspectives and that was the idea of having this podcast um, when Marie and I first started talking about doing this yeah. um, so that's that's who we that's who we are that's our mm-hmm. kind of our background uh, why don't you tell us a little okay about so um, okay so I, I did my undergraduate at the University of Leicester um, and then I did my PhD at the University of Leicester as well in uh, John Chalice's group and it was linked with GlaxoSmithKline, and it was uh, kind of an in vitro uh, pharmacology-based PhD. Um, And from there, I went to the MRC Toxicology Unit to do uh, my first postdoc with Professor Andrew Tobin. Mm -hmm. Um, And there, I learned a lot of uh, in vivo pharmacology skills, so kind of like linking uh, my previous skills into um, animal models of disease um, with a focus really on neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, so from Andrew's group, I've uh, joined the University of Glasgow uh, as an LCAS fellow. Um, so this is a kind of like an independent position that is really a st- uh, meant to provide like a stepping stone really into independence. Um, so it is uh, independent, although obviously, as you know, Andrew, this group yeah. has also joined. So I've come up as part of a, a big group um, from Leicester. Mm-hmm. We're just kind of getting ourselves established here yeah. in the university. Yeah. It's been quite a big move for us. So, so yeah. yeah. What have been the most challenging things so uh, far, would you say? <laughs> well, um, move, moving a lot of mice colonies to the university has <laughs> <laughs> been like... Um, a huge challenge. They you probably don't appreciate it. That. No. Uh, yeah, they actually need. To, yeah, <laughs> honestly, it's been it has been a challenge. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously it's obviously a big thing to try and settle a quite a yeah, big research yeah, group mm-hmm, into yeah. a new institute and sure. just kind of make new connections with people and learn who everyone is and especially given that the institute's kind of like split between different buildings, it's, yeah, it's been true. challenging. Yeah, but challenging. But, uh, but no, I think we're, we're getting there finally. So, so, yeah. so do you have your own group? Like, uh, do you have like students or something? Um, so at the moment, um, I am waiting to employ. So we have, uh, I, I got a joint grant with Andrew, so mm-hmm. I'm co-investigator on an MRC grant. And we have a postdoc position that has been advertised at the moment. So that will be uh, like my first official um, postdoc, and then we have uh, two PhD students that I'll also be uh, supervising uh, again, joint with Andrew in September. So Ooh, at the good. moment, it's uh, just me <laughs> and yeah. uh, kind of just helping out with the projects that are going on within the group as well. Um, so that's it, probably it a good move, you know. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, been, settle, it's been really, it's yeah, been really yeah. good. How has the transition been from postdoc with a PI? To being a co-PI now with your PI, um, do you feel like do you feel like boundaries have had to change, or that you've had to change kind of your mental outlook on your role? Yeah, I, I mean, it's still it's still a learning curve for sure, and I think it's a learning curve for both of us, not just for mm. not just for me, but it's it's you know a, a new a new challenge for Andrew as well. Um, so yeah, I think I think the boundaries have changed slightly. Um, but with whilst I was doing my postdoc in Andrew's group, I did take at least towards the end of the postdoc, like the maybe the final two years, I did take quite a like leading role in the direction of the projects. Mm. Um, so when I joined, my my project was on something slightly different, but for various reasons, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with in science. <laughs> uh, it didn't. It went down a slightly different road and, and I kind of led on that. And so uh, in that sense, it hasn't been that much of a challenge because I was kind of already leading it in the mm-hmm. postdoc. Um, so, so, I mean, wh- I think what 
we're doing now is we we almost have two separate streams and one of them I'm kind of like taking control of and leading and the other one I'm kind of you know still involved with and it's uh, almost a continuation of what I was doing uh, so so yeah it's it's a little it, I don't know as time progresses I'll probably be able to uh, reflect on that a little bit more because again it's just really in its infancy at the minute and yeah, yeah. has a until we get the people in place like the new PhD mm-hmm. students and postdocs I can't really say how it's going, but I mean, I think I yeah. think we're we're kind of mm-hmm. we're getting there. Yeah. But to my perception, you know, it's like you are a good role model for those that they want to step into the like become independent in research. So I guess the mentoring scheme will cover this kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's there's there's no question that the that the uh, jump from PhD, uh, postdoc to independence is um, a grey one I think and it's a difficult step and so I think that there, I don't think that there's necessarily a right or wrong way to go like so a lot of people would say that it was maybe better to go completely independently whereas I see um, you know being a, you know attached to Andrew's group and still having kind of the infrastructure within the group mm-hmm. as a real benefit to my mm-hmm. research it certainly is is that and I'm still getting kind of uh, good publications and good mentoring from Andrew himself, um, you know, in terms of my next career steps. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, it's 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 a difficult one, but I think that the, it has so far proven um, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. very good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I've noticed um, going from grad, you know, being a graduate student mm-hmm. or a postgraduate student and being a postdoc now is this transition into having a responsibility of service. Yeah. So you know, you start reviewing papers mm-hmm. as a peer, you start maybe overseeing some undergraduate or some postgraduate students, and um, then you start being on committees, you know, we're all on the media, the social media committee mm-hmm. now. Um, so tell us more about the, um, the committee that you're sitting on now and how the, the mentoring program kind of fits into that okay. mission. Um, so, I mean, as I as I said earlier, like the uh, early career researchers committee is only just formed. Uh, so we had one meeting so far with uh, Rusha, Femi, and myself, and that was really just to identify uh, members within the institute that could uh, sit on the committee. And we were really interested in having um, like representatives from different stages of the career um, and within different areas within the institute. And I think that the idea is to really address some of the questions and the um, issues that were raised within the staff survey, um, particularly from the early career researcher mm-hmm. uh, community within the institute, um, and also to identify opportunities for being on member, uh, being on like committees and uh, membership op- opportunities, uh, like funding and grant opportunities. Um, and then obviously the, again to feed into that is the mentoring um, which is, is, a, is a huge kind of support for like early career researchers so all of those things drawn together within the early career research committee and then we're going to feed into institute research um, meetings and also the Athena Swan so it kind of links in with all of these things and the idea is really to support um, and provide information to all of the early career research within the institute. Mm-hmm. So if you were to have to kind of maybe state like the top three things that you want um, young scientists or or junior staff um, to know about what you want them to be able to get out of the mentoring component of this committee, what what would those things be? Um, So um, one would be to kind of help them um, direct their careers in a, in the, like a path, a way that is right for them. And so obviously the identifying funding opportunities um, and kind of empowering them to make decisions in order to move their career forward um, would be probably the main, the main thing. I think a huge thing for me is not just to kind of focus on the getting the data and um, doing the research, but also to get involved in other things. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, part of being a in, uh, successful independent scientist is to kind of um, create a profile for yourself that is without, outside of the institute. 
And so I think that's really important to kind of build a support network, not only to like at PI level, but also like early career researchers. So for instance, um, I applied for a Royal Society uh, travel fellowship um, during my PhD with Andrew. And I spent three months at um, Monash Institute for Pharmaceutical Sciences in Australia. And uh, whilst I was there, I kind of um, got to know a lot of people and um, you know, uh, that are roughly the same level as me, maybe kind of a little bit further further along the path than I am. And really, they've they've really supported kind of that that path. And I think uh, so, so. A couple of the applications that I've put in subsequently, I've had um, a number of them as collaborators on it, which has been highlighted at least in feedback from the funding as like as you know a really positive step and so I guess another thing for the early career research is to um, realise that it isn't just about kind of the the research necessarily but it's about getting yourself out of out there so obviously being on committees and giving talks internationally um, or even just kind of like locally but just mm. kind of uh, getting a name for yourself and not just kind of hiding in the shadows of the people mm, that you're yeah. working for. I feel like we've uh we're always told, oh, you should network, you should network, you should build a yeah. network, start networking, which always makes me cringe a little bit because it's this idea of going to a conference and being like, hello, my <laughs> name is Emily, I have, have we met before, yeah. you know, I'm going yeah. around and just like handing out cards or something. It just sounds mm. like you're not really making any sort of meaningful connection. Mm. But um, I think when you step back and just really think about it as just engaging with people who are interested in similar things as yeah. you are, um, and that having these having these friends um, in multiple places definitely gives you a lot more opportunities later on. Yeah. And and nowadays, I think with the with with the way that funding looks like having collaborators mm, that you can thing. not only ask for advice but also do work together mm-hmm. with really um, diversifies your yeah, yeah. kind of source resources exactly. in general. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that when people come in as early career researchers, particularly I would say at like PhD and postdoc level, there's there's some a, a bit of a lack of understanding of like the importance of that. Yeah. I think, mm-hmm. yeah. um, not across the board because obviously that's generalising, but but you know yeah. I think mm-hmm. I think that people don't realise how important it actually is. But then when I come to sit down and write, you know, this application, and I've got kind of friends that I've met in Australia and. Uh, you know, when we collaborate now with people in America that we've met through the uh, conferences that we've been at, you know, that's a huge support for mm-hmm. these types of applications, and, and obviously yeah. that's what's kind of driving forward. Yeah. So, are you out out of this committee? Are you going to provide information on one to one basis, or is going to be like more like meetings? Uh, as the coffee mo- mornings that uh, the PIs have, how is the um, have you decided of how you're gonna structure? The um, so we like we haven't worked out the details yet. Mm. So I guess that we're going to discuss this mentoring scheme mm. at length in our next meeting. Now that we've kind of identified mm. the committee, um, so I mean my feeling is that one to one mentors are, are really important. Yeah. Um, and particularly outside. I mean, if possible, outside of the institute, but at least outside of your research group yeah. or research yeah. theme or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we haven't we haven't really um, kind of worked out the details, mm-hmm. but like in the first instance, we're going to just really encourage everyone um, from you know the early career researchers within the institute to give us kind of feedback on what would be helpful to them and uh, what they want to get out of a mentoring mm-hmm. scheme. Okay, mm-hmm. that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how does this work with informing um, early career scientists about the REF? That's something that we've kind of talked a lot about, or have been talked to um, <laughs> a lot about. Um, and I think I, I find I find the idea of kind of the REF somewhat confusing and overwhelming. Mm-hmm. The the idea of how best to um, present your work, present yourself, and um, show that you're contributing either, um, as you said, through research, but also through kind of your social programs yeah. and things like that, um, and that that all can contribute to the REF in different ways. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I think about, too, is that as our research is, we're kind of um, diverse in the ways that we 
want to do our own research mm-hmm. or contribute to to it. Um, so the rough is great that for people who want to do just like lots and lots of high impact papers, that kind of fills a box for them. But yeah. then if there are people who are interested in undergraduate research or social networking or outreach um, that also can really contribute to them. Yeah. Do you see um, the mentoring uh, program kind of helping people identify different ways that they might best make their ref contribution? Yeah, I mean, the, we, again, we haven't really discussed this, and to, and it's actually new to me that um, kind of yeah. early mm-hmm. career research, so this is what this yeah. um, committee is all about, is kind of identifying mm-hmm. the issues and the information that is needed for the early career research within the Institute, and and to kind of like feed feed that information back. So I was unaware that there is a lack of information on the ref for early career mm-hmm. researchers. Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, yeah, for sure, like the mentoring can, like, I mean, w- high impact papers are obviously fantastic, but like you say, that other people want to contribute in different ways. And so yeah, for sure, like the mentoring scheme can, can, help, mm-hmm. can help to identify ways in which people can contribute in, in yeah. different ways r- yeah. other than just research. I guess the ref is kind of new too. So maybe yeah. the mentors are <laughs> yeah, learning exactly. on their, yeah, I've, it, their way. Yeah, there's like lots of changes kind of yeah, going on at the moment. New changes, so think, yeah. 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 So ideally, um, the mentors will be established PIs? I think, um, like, in terms of identifying mentors for uh, specific people, I guess it's an individual thing. Um, so that's going to that's gonna kind of be directed a lot by the mentees as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, for instance, like you say about a one-to-one mentoring, like some people might prefer to not be one-to-one and mm-hmm. then we could maybe arrange like small groups um, for mentoring to kind of focus on different aspects of, you know, the academic uh, career path. Um, so, so yeah. But that means that, the, let's say, if we are looking for advice from PIs, mm-hmm. that means that the PIs will be open for this mentoring scheme, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I like I or uh, as for somebody. Yeah, else, so yeah. we need to not only do we need to identify the needs of the mentees within the institute, we also need to identify people that are willing mm. to act as exactly. mentors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like for instance, I was assigned a mentor when I joined the university in um, in September, and she doesn't she doesn't work within kind of our research theme, but mm-hmm. she was really useful in terms of introducing me to the university and just making sure that I was kind of um, you know getting on well in in my uh, personal and mm-hmm. and um, yeah. academic life uh, when I joined which was you know it was it was really nice to know that kind of someone cared about yep, the fact absolutely. that I was settling in and yeah. you know exactly. and she was yeah. she just got to know me in terms yeah. of my hobbies and everything as well as my professional mm-hmm. life no that's important, yeah, I think that's well. really important. The, the life part is something that we sometimes uh, don't think about yeah and exactly we have a life outside yeah. exactly. the research yeah. and the lab so yeah. it's a, but yeah. that's going to be so so in terms of who would mentor different people mm. it's going to be an individual thing yeah. Because, yeah. yeah of course i mean the person that i was assigned um you know i think is is a really good person for me to have as a mentor within yeah. the institute yeah. um but obviously you know, different people might look for different things yeah. With, yeah. Uh, with, with a mentor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I think I oftentimes think of a mentor as someone who's going to help me, like, write the best papers or mm. do my best research. And, of course, I would want a mentor who is in my field so that they yeah. can help me mm-hmm. navigate yeah, yeah. that space. But I I think we had Mary Williams talk mm. about how you, have to, you can have multiple mentors. Mm-hmm. There might be one mentor that does help you gain uh, an understanding of your path your your professional path yeah. but having someone who helps you with like all the new administrative stuff that you yeah. never knew yeah. how to do before yeah. or yeah someone who helps you navigate your new environment yeah. just as a person yeah. is yeah. very helpful yeah I've had um like over the I guess past five years or so I've had lots of different mentors actually for different things and they haven't all been formal mentors either uh, and so there've there've been people along um, kind of my career path that have helped me in different ways. Um, so, but uh, the the formal mentors that I've had, um, yeah, I mean they've always been kind of focused not just on my uh, professional life but also my personal life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, to, in terms of helping to write the best papers and helping to make the best career decisions. Um, so you know, my 
um, so and, Andrew Tobin has been you know like yeah, a fantastic or mentor for yeah, me in, yeah, yeah. in that sense but yeah. you know sometimes it's good to to get some information or some direction from people that are not necessarily working within your field or your yeah. lab or yeah. you yeah. know someone that's completely unbiased yeah. in terms yeah. of what what career path yeah. you should take yeah. or, mm-hmm. yeah. or just getting a different perspective exactly. of the way the exactly. paths can happen I know um when I was a graduate student um talking with faculty a lot of times they say oh you know you need to do at least one postdoc and then mm-hmm. it was no 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 you need to do at least like two or three yeah. and they should each be three to five years long yeah. and then you think when will you ever become faculty yeah, here yeah, constantly yeah. but then or if you as as someone who's who's well in America not very many Americans go abroad mm-hmm. so um but you know if, if you want to do work abroad and then you come back oh of course you have to do another postdoc back in America yeah. so that you have different whatever and then meeting postdocs who said oh I did my post postdoc in Switzerland and came back and got a faculty position no problem yeah. you know it all depends mm-hmm. it yeah. all depends on on your individual situation exactly you know so having having more perspectives getting more perspectives yeah. as you find your own way yeah you can say, okay, well, I want to take a little bit of that person's mm-hmm. uh, suggestions, and I want to take a little bit of that other person, and kind of make it your own <laughs> yeah. melange. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But. That's what, that's kind of what I was saying earlier about this transition between kind of postdoc and independence, and that it's not just a simple kind of straight yeah. road that everyone should take, and that yeah. you know different people do it in slightly different ways and at different ages. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, some people do three postdocs, some people just do one, and yeah. it is it's an individual thing yeah and so yeah yeah I think as as objective as we all try to be as scientists and we try to standardize everything it's like (laughs) the least standardized and most personal yeah thing I mean everyone's got their own own way of of going about life yeah exactly but it's good to have a help absolutely yeah for sure yeah Certainly, for some, like I mean, I've, I don't know, um, you know, exactly what the postdocs want, but um, I think there's a lack of people that are kind of trying to make this uh, transition that can act yeah. as mentors Absolutely. for people that are just behind them, like so yeah. at postdoc or even PhD level. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for me, that would have been really helpful if I'd have had some someone just a little bit further yeah. along before yes. I made this step. But actually, there wasn't really uh, many people around where I was at the time, yeah. and so I relied on the mentorship of Andrew and the mentorship of uh, you know people that um, I met during my PhD um, and my time in Australia. Yeah. But but yeah, I think I think like now that we have a group, um, particularly like Rusha, uh, Brian Hudson is also mm-hmm. on the ECR uh, committee, and he's a fellow within Graham Milligan's group mm-hmm. and Femi. I think that there's enough of us that if people at postdoc and PhD level wanted someone of that yeah. like kind of career level rather than yeah. a PI that's No, that's of, important yeah. because a PI is already established. So the way yeah. that even for the funding I'm thinking of course it's much easier, let's say, for a big PI to mm-hmm. have the funding yeah. coming because they have like established yeah. careers so on. So a person like you for example will be more helpful for me that yeah. I want to go into your position but you are I mean beyond that's my next step but yeah. probably you have more recent and yeah. the, uh, the experience yeah. is more probably is going to be more helpful for me yeah, at absolutely. this point yeah, yeah I think it's really important that it's recent advice because yeah. as an undergraduate at a different university I did have access to a mentoring scheme but my mentoring scheme well it was my mentor was a professor yeah, who yeah finished their undergraduate degree 30 years ago and whilst it was great to have the academic knowledge and sort of yeah you'd be great go and do a PhD kind of thing but their lack of recent understanding and the developments of what it means to be an undergraduate student kind of gets lost so I think it's really encouraging to have sort of a recent Hmm. you know I think something that we could also look at if the demand was high for that, that like level um, is also, um, you know, there are fellows within other institutes that could act as mentors as yeah, well. Like, and so it doesn't have to be restricted to the fellows that no. will, are within this institute. So yeah. I know of a few in other institutes and I'm sure we could find others that could yeah. act as mentors. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's yeah. an important yeah. thing yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 I suppose you diversify. Every Like Emily was saying earlier, you take there are so many different paths you can take. Exactly. But for us in molecular biology, compared to the re- like the Institute of Immunity, they might have taken even more different paths than exactly. we might have done. And yeah. I think the diversity is just going to further bolster the help that people can yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And there are also um, mentoring schemes that we can feed in if people are interested that are not necessarily within the university at all. So, mm. for instance, um, I have be- re- very recently become a mentee for the Academy of Medical Sciences. Um, so, um, and this is very recent, so I'm going to a mentoring man- master class next week in London, and that's just to identify the person who's going to act as my mentor, but that's going to be mm-hmm. someone that's not within the institute yeah. or the university, and someone yeah. that can help mm-hmm. me with you know, critical career decisions um, and provide information about uh, you know, my me- next steps um, that, that are kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Beyond, beyond the university. I think, too, the the way that the landscape is changing for academic research, there are, I think, in the next few years, it's going to be a decision-making make, time for graduate students and postdocs about whether to stay in academia or not. Absolutely. And um, I know that, um, in my experience, talking, trying to talk about outside of academic academia options with professors they'd say oh why would you want to do that absolutely you know this is the best job ever (laughs) you know or or even be um I've had I've had conversations too saying you know I don't really know if it's if being a PI is really where I want to be and being told you can do it like have confidence in yourself (laughs) and saying well it's not that I don't think I can do it it's whether or not I really want to do Absolutely. it. Yeah. And it's very difficult to get... Um, I don't know anybody in the industry. You know, I don't know anybody um, who does anything else with a PhD. Yeah. Like or my, in our case, with teaching, because yes. yeah. we are research-based, so we don't have access to teaching. To teaching. Yeah. We, we so, don't have any teaching experience right. as and postdocs. Okay. And yeah. this is something that As, is aside from supervision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I think that that, like, that, that is yeah. something, that is specifically something that I've, I've been mm. Absolutely. Um, hitting up against, is applying for faculty positions and being saying, well, everything looks great, you're very competitive, but you don't have enough hours in front of te- uh, in front of a classroom and, and saying, does that well, mean I just can't. lectures or does it mean tutorials and I have no idea. it could mean anything I mean yeah. what, what I found as a PhD student is that they throw teaching opportunities at you yeah and that's great for me you know I can make a bit more money and I enjoy yeah. teaching but I don't find it yeah. necessarily fair that that's well, not extended to like postdocs I know how to do marking mm-hmm. and I can definitely give lab practicals mm-hmm. those that is the type of experience yeah. that I have from my PhD courses and um, from my time as a student but I don't know necessarily how to build a curriculum yeah I don't necessarily know how to design a lesson plan or choose a textbook mm-hmm. and I don't really have the opportunity to gain that experience yeah. mm-hmm. I can certainly take over someone's lecture mm-hmm. but I really that's it's not being in front of um, a classroom that yeah. I necessarily need it's the it's all of the other little parts of yeah. actually building kind of an um, a, a teaching base yes. um, or, or profile mm-hmm. and those are the things that I think ooh I don't know how mm-hmm. how I'm supposed to do that yeah. um, and at least in our case if you are research staff as you are if you're re- if you're a postdoc here um, you you can't really mm-hmm. teach um, there aren't really those opportunities to do okay. it outside of maybe um, doing tutorials Mm -hmm. but I don't know if that necessarily counts you know Um, Um, and as an international uh, mm. person I also can't I I don't have the ability to do it based on my visa okay so there's you know there's definitely parts to navigate yeah yeah. with that and um, so thinking so thinking about or if you wanted to get into like scientific journalism Mm -hmm. or something who do you go to to talk about how to do that or to build your to start building your CV in a way, or using your postdoc, your final years of your postdoc, to really start cultivating yeah. and curating your CV appro- yeah, yeah. appropriately for that job. So do you think that there's, uh, like, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm getting from the three of you that there isn't there isn't enough information about other careers other than just in... No. No. And why would there be? Yeah, exactly. Our mentors are doing exactly what they want to yeah. be doing. So, I mean, it's... it's um, yeah. So we, we, or if you're interested in going into industry, what kind of things should you be doing yeah. in your in your postdoc yeah. mm-hmm. to qualify you yeah. for those kinds of positions? Yes. Because again, we have as a PhD student funded by the university, we have these fantastic lectures given by the careers department by a PGR specialist, 
and she comes in and spoke to us about all the different things that as a PhD student what we could do and she discussed the career paths outside of academia albeit quite limited to some specific fields mm. in industry but I fail to understand why that can't be not necessarily rolled out to postdocs but why postdocs can't access that service as well. There are some sessions for the career uh, from the career department but I think the mentor is key because it's going to be more yeah, at the individual yeah. level, mm-hmm. this is what you need. Absolutely. I, I don't want yeah, to go to yeah. another lecture that I will listen <laughs> yeah. general mm-hmm. things for three hours. It's fine, but yeah. how many times I can do it? You know, like yeah. I have specific needs, you know, my plan is like, like that on my head. How you, mm-hmm. yeah. I can work yeah. yeah. it happen doing you know? today yeah. or tomorrow? What can I be mm-hmm. doing in the next yeah. year? I think that the I think that. there's a quite so f- certainly for me like so say if you were to come up to me and say you know I, I like doing A B and C mm-hmm. you know what what do you think I should do I think probably you know my career is in research and I love mm-hmm. what I do and so I'm not I, you know it's not for everyone but I, I I probably couldn't advise you on what scientific writing would mm-hmm. be for you however I do have. L- like friends in different um, areas that have gone on to do different things. So I have lots of friends that are working in the industry at the moment. Mm-hmm. I have a friend that went out of Andrew Tobin's group last year to be a lawyer, so he did a, a conversion course. I have a friend that uh, has gone and done medical writing, and I have uh, various friends from my PhD that have gone and done other science kind of related mm-hmm. careers, but not research. Mm-hmm. So probably the mentor could act n- not necessarily to kind of guide you, but maybe to put you yeah, in yeah, touch yeah, yeah. with yeah, different yeah. people exactly. that yeah. could offer advice yeah. in those yeah. areas. Like, yeah, again, it's like finding, again, yeah. finding another node that helps yeah, exactly. you yeah. connect mm-hmm. with yeah. other people. Yeah. 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 So we, we should certainly feed that into the yeah. mentoring scheme yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a uh, European, I think you need to feed something more about the funding coming from European Union, yeah. because yeah. lots of fellowships will go, maybe, going to go off <laughs> the bucket for UK based people. Yeah. For for example, for me, something that I'm very interested in, I was anxious. Now we know that we're not going to have any problem li- staying mm. in UK, but still the funding yeah. will be yeah. changing. Yeah. So probably, and I, I, I know that there are other European uh, staff yeah. members, so maybe a part of your... Uh, Agenda will be related to yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it's not obviously it's not very not very clear for no for no. I just say as a suggestion, right, that, you as know, that is that something through, that uh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. I think it will save the money wise. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest hurdles that research in the UK is about to face. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And for PhD yeah. students, you know, PhD people students that they want well. to come and yeah. study here, you know, it's mm-hmm. like yeah. still the university I know says, you know, come over and it's fine, but this but come <laughs> over is only for the next two years yeah, maximum. No. But mm. people don't plan only for two years. For no. them, of course, no. I want to plan for something <laughs> way longer yeah. than yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we need to address. So we need to feed back. Yeah. Kind of as and when things come through to people. Yeah, but that's yeah. the problem. Everything's so up in the air. You know, yeah, exactly. No, that's true. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, mm-hmm. to have it on the back of the plan. You know, the agenda. You know, <laughs> yeah. something has to be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing we have uh, kind of already implemented is. So I'm not sure if you're aware of the um, bulletin that goes around. I think monthly of the, the funding, uh, the no. funding opportunities. Mm. So I know from quite a few. Um, like postdocs within you know like the lab where I'm working that they receive that email and it just Mm. doesn't get opened and actually within that we've now uh, got a separate section that is specifically for early career research that's important yeah so because the thing is when you get as a postdoc a a email that says funding bulletin you just oh that's not relevant to me that's relevant to people that have their own lab yeah uh, Mm. actually there are some really interesting things like i I said earlier that i applied for this royal society traveling grant and that was just three thousand pounds but it actually um, you know, goes on my CV as yeah, you know, funding has yeah, been yeah. awarded to me, yeah, yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. and then there are obviously uh, slightly bigger schemes, and there's schemes that are directed just to people in the final year of their PhD. Yeah. There are schemes just for postdocs that have mm-hmm. only done one mm-hmm. or two years, and so all of these kind of opportunities they're now being put into a separate spreadsheet yeah. within this document, yep. nice. and so one of the things we're trying to do is to encourage. Uh, postdocs and PhD students to actually open the mm-hmm. Excel spreadsheet yeah. and look at those opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So, I know so. one of one of my um, mentors when I when she was helping me kind of put together my CV and stuff. Mm-hmm. She, one of the things that she had said was, "Yeah, if you've got travel grants, if you have 
been able to get some of these awards because I always think, oh, they're just like little travel grants. Yeah, they're no exactly. big deal. And she's like, it, you wrote a proposal and you were given money. Exactly. Yeah. This shows <laughs> this shows that you can actually get money for the things yeah, that you do just, yeah. and the way that you write. So even if it's a couple hundred bucks, yeah. even if it's a couple thousand dollars even, or pounds or whatever, um, the fact that you were able to write something exactly. that yeah. someone wanted to give you money for, mm -hmm. that's that's yeah. like, that is a grant. Absolutely. You know? that, is, yeah. that is a grant yeah. proposal yeah. that you got. So you know, show that you're fundable, show that you yeah. can do these things. Well, and I, I had never thought of that. I oh, thought, yeah. you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, so I got just a little bit of money for this thing. It's like, yeah, but lots of people wrote in, yeah. asked for that money, <laughs> yeah. and you got yeah. it. So, yeah. It is know. a really good point because uh, when I came to the interview for this, this fellowship at, the, at this university, um, one of the things I was asked is whether I've managed to ever get funding. Mm. And so when I applied for this Royal Society grant in, I think it was 2014, uh, once I got it, I was like, oh, it's only £3,000, it's no big deal, kind of thing. Actually, it was probably, you know, yeah. a, a big factor in, yeah, in yeah. my application yeah. here. And so... Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah they yeah. should they shouldn't be kind of trivialized in that yeah, way. Yeah. You don't think really of important. it as funding. You no, exactly. think of it as like, well, I don't a have boost. I, I don't have a grant. No. You yeah. just think it was an award or something. Yeah, but no. it really it, yeah, it, it yeah, is, yeah, and they're really really important. It just Absolutely. matters a lot. Yeah. 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 So Sophie, are you gonna have like a, um, a space, an online space where people can find information? Are you gonna create like a web page within um, the institute? So, so we discussed it. Um, at the last meeting on how we were going to kind of um, distribute this information and um, so I, I said that I would kind of show on Facebook um, kind of what we were doing mm -hmm. and just uh, mm -hmm. like put details of the mentoring scheme mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of a specific space or a specific email address we haven't got that far yet. Uh, if you think it's something that would be important, um, then we can certainly we can. I was wondering yeah. because, for example, the email with the funding opportunities yes. is mm. an email that yeah. you read it. You might have like a flag, maybe yeah. I have to yeah, go back. But if you have this information folder. somewhere that is permanent, yeah. or okay, changes whenever they have to change, but yeah. something that you can always go back and check. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like what is the, um, for example, the seminar. Um, tab that we have on the institute where you mm -hmm. can go and see the schedule and so something yeah. like that would be a thing that's really good idea. Uh, useful okay yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that can definitely centralized be yeah it. yeah well i think um, probably what the best thing to do is um so i think that our meeting is uh, not next week but the week after like our mm -hmm. like, first kind of full mm -hmm. um committee meeting and uh, once we've met and kind of identified the the things that we need to kind of address like immediately mm -hmm. maybe I could come back and yeah. read that yeah, to that you and yeah, yeah, so have have yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so because I should have some more information on yeah. the mentoring scheme and I should have some more information on how we're going to disseminate the findings mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the of the committee yeah. to the institute yeah. but a, a designated space I think is a really yeah. good idea yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and that way we can uh, anybody who's interested or involved in the mentoring program yeah. can tell some oh go look at this thing see yeah if that's, you that's do a good it. idea yes yeah. So. yeah yeah for sure yeah. good that's nice yeah i think uh yeah we address everything for the moment <laughs> so that is for the moment and as sophie mentioned we're going to have another podcast covering the same topic soon in the meantime if you want to learn news from our institute you can follow our facebook and twitter pages also you can follow myself at m underscore papanatsu emily larson at er larson underscore phd and emily armstrong at emily x armstrong see you soon